Hey everybody, this is Dale with Networking Step by Step. And in today's video cheat sheet, we're going to enable the OSPF routing process on Router 2. So let's look at what we're going to cover. First of all, we're going to verify that OSPF is not running on Router 2. Then we're going to look at the significance of the process ID in OSPF. And then last, we're going to look at the default commands that are enabled when OSPF routing process is configured. So let's look at the topology real quick. We're going to be enabling the OSPF routing process here on Router 2. So let's get started. First of all, like I said earlier, we're going to verify that OSPF is not running on Router 2 with the show IP OSPF command. And as you can see, there was no output, therefore OSPF is not configured. Now the way you configure or enable an OSPF routing process, you do that with the command router OSPF and then the process ID. And the process ID can be any number between 1 and basically 65,000. Now there's a lot of confusion out there about the process ID. This is what it boils down to. The process ID is locally significant to the router you're on. In our case, we're on router 2. The process ID is locally significant to router 2. Now what that means is is that router 1 does not care what router 2's process ID is and vice versa router 2 does not care what router 1's process ID is. Actually I have router 1's process ID configured to 1 and router 3's process ID configured to 3. We're going to be configuring router 2's process ID to, yep you guessed it, 2. So once again, it is locally significant. I've actually seen other networks that whatever OSPF area the router happens to be in configures the process ID to that area. So let's say router 5 and 6 here are in area OSPF area 2, then their process ID would be 2. Now that makes it a little problematic for area border routers like 3 and 4. Do you put them in the process ID uh, 0, which you can't do, or do you put them in process ID area 2? So you can see where that can be a little difficult, but once again I just want to drive home the point that it's locally significant, they don't have to match, it just matters to that particular router. Okay, so like I said earlier, router OSPF 2. I'm going to choose the process ID of 2 for router 2. There, we've enabled the OSPF routing process for router 2. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Now let's do our show IP OSPF command to see if we have any output now, and we do, and there's lots of it. This is, uh, a lot of things have been enabled by default in the way of timers and checksums and um, all, all kinds of, of information here that was enabled by default when you enabled the OSPF routing process here on router 2. Now these are things that don't necessarily show up when you do a show running config, but there is one command that uh, will be there by default when you do a show run. And I'm going to do a show run pipe begin router OSPF because I don't want to look at all the rest of my configuration. I want it to start right at the router OSPF portion of my running config. And as you can see, underneath our process OSPF process ID of 2 that we just enabled that the command log adjacency changes was put there by default so I didn't put it there so if you ever enable OSPF on your network and you see that command don't be alarmed it was put there by default okay so that's all there is to it so once again uh, we enabled the OSPF routing process on router 2. We first verified that OSPF was not running. We then talked about the local, uh, the significance of the process ID in OSPF, and once again, it's locally significant. And then we looked at uh, different default commands that were enabled in the show running config, and then also default timers and, and things that were enabled um, when you configured an OSPF routing process. All right, that's all there is to it. I hope this was uh, helpful, and uh, we'll hear from you guys on the, the next video cheat sheet, which is uh, enabling or hard-coding a uh, OSPF router ID. Thanks.